Hey y'all, I'm Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about this book. Why am I so bad at this? Today, we're going to talk about Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. I just finished this book and I have a lot of feelings about it. So I'm going to try to discuss those now. Okay, I, the plot of this book is basically imagine the kids from Scooby-Doo, but now they're all grown up and fucked up in the head and they go back to revisit a case because, so imagine that Scooby-Doo, it's always a guy in a mask, right? But imagine if like one time it wasn't just a guy in a mask and the kids grow up, they're not okay, because of this one particular case and they go back to revisit it. That's the concept for this book. It sounds amazing, right? And the plot is amazing, but there are some, you just have to get, it's basically every problem that I have with this book is the writing style in particular, which is hard, it's hard to be so judgy about it, but Edgar Cantero, the guy that wrote it, is not, like, I don't think English is his first language. He was born in Barcelona, so probably a Spanish speaker, but this book is in English. It's a second book in English, and the whole style is basically, it starts out in second person and then switches to like this weird sort of jumble of part script, part novel, part multiple POV, but it switches back and forth between them like mid, not just mid chapter, not just mid section in a chapter, but like mid paragraph, it will switch. And it kind of drove me cuckoo bananas. It was so hard. It took me like a week to read this book. Like I bought it, I read like 20 pages and then I put it down and didn't pick it up for another three or four days. And the only reason that I picked it back up is because I really wanted to read something else but wouldn't let myself DNF it that fast. So I was able to power through and I did read the whole thing. I think I gave it two and a half stars but I rounded up to three on Goodreads just because like it's not it's not bad I'm not gonna say it's bad it just the writing style is not my cup of tea at all I'm trying to find an example of where it does this and you would think that it wouldn't be hard because it does it so often in the book okay so here check this out I'm gonna try to let my camera focus this looks like a regular novel right and then all of a sudden it switches here on the bottom of this page and like onto the next two to more of like a script format and I just I don't I don't like it I don't like it and then on top of that it's got a lot of problems that I think are just a personal thing and a lot of reasons why I don't normally read adult books like adult fantasy or adult contemporary like any sort of book that is made for grown-up people I tend to not like it and this has a lot of those things in it that I don't care for the language is very flowery and there are some moments where I'm like yes I am about this and then there are some where I'm like too much dude like you don't let me just let, I've also never had to look up so many words in my life like like bor 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 do you know what that word means because I didn't I had to look it up turns out it's a rumbling noise produced by the movement of gas through the intestines it's bubble guts. Just say bubble guts, man. That doesn't sound nearly as fancy, does it? Or like in the dialogue, these people in this book are supposed to be in their like roughly mid 20s, which I just recently came out of. So I feel pretty confident in saying that I remember what it's like to be in my mid 20s because it was like two years ago. And they would use words like verisimilitude verisimilitude. I've literally never said that before in my life. What? Why? Why did you say that? I mean, again, not English is not his first language, so on some level it's like, damn son, way to go. But on another level it's like, fucking nobody talks like that, dude. Those are <laughs> basically the only notes that I have for it. I have some, I have a specific something that I was going to give an example on that's on page 106. Um, oh, 
Um, I've talked about this with uh, Joshana in the comments on one of her videos, I think, about the over descriptive properties that some authors tend to have in their books. It's another thing about adult books that I don't care for. But this one b gave me mixed feelings because on one hand I'm like, wow, that's great that you wrote that. That's pretty good writing. And then on the other side I'm like, but so unnecessary. Here we go. Carrie had brought along her binoculars. They were the same ones she used to carry as a child for bird spotting, but they were good binoculars that she'd treated with care, and they befitted a grown-up. She went for her magnifying glass and her compass, both artifacts of beautiful craftsmanship that she had owned since childhood and still suited long-fingered hands. Andy was sure there was a company in England, possibly founded by a society of African explorers in the Victorian era, a bunch of Colonel Mustards with pith helmets and friendly mutton chops, who manufactured this high-tier field equipment, especially for kids, aware that young explorers like Carrie must not be patronized with cheap plastic toys, but be offered the best durable tools to encourage their vocation, because those curious children shall be the great discoverers of tomorrow. Bye, y'all! Hey y'all, I'm Stephanie. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. I make videos like this frequently on this channel, and I would love to have you be a part of the Beardicorn family. So, yeah, do it. Click it. Did you click it? Click it. Okay, bye y'all.